G'day guys, welcome back to another video. We're gonna do a quick recap of UFC 305 from Perth, which has just finished. Obviously the biggest story of the night is Drikas Duplessis defending his title for the first time against Israel Adesanya in what was actually a really good fight. Uh, we'll get to that a bit later though, because there's quite a few stories to touch on here. It was actually a pretty decent card, I thought. I didn't watch all the early prelims. I turned it on when the fight pass prelims were on, and that was Jack Jenkins. Man, this Jack Jenkins guy, holy shit, man. He kicks like an absolute mule. I don't know what the go is with his kicks and how he's got them to be so effective. But he has broken three guys' legs in MMA fights. I think one of them came in the UFC maybe, or maybe they were all before the UFC. But he's broken three guys' fucking shin bones, man, just from kicking them. And you saw it in the fight against Herbert Burns. Like, he had to switch stances. Uh, he went down a couple of times and got up really gingerly. He could tell he was really struggling. And then in the end, he just was like, man, I, I can't do this. I can't get up. I can't take any more of this punishment. We need to go study that dude because he's an absolute beast. He's going to be jumping into the rankings, I believe, in uh, the featherweight division, which is interesting because he's got really good boxing. He's really strong. Obviously, he's got really good leg kicks. Man, if Ilya Taporia sticks around at the top and Jack Jenkins keeps getting better and better, we may end up seeing a really exciting fight between Jack Jenkins and Ilya Taporia. I know that's a long way away. He has to obviously fight a lot more times to get in title conten contention, but uh, he looked really good. Justin Tuffer, what the fuck's going on there? Justin Tuffer for Johnny Walker's brother, I think his name's uh, Volta. I don't, it's a strange name. I don't know where their family's from because they're Brazilian, but they don't look Brazilian at all. And their name's Walker. He's swinging absolute bombs. It was actually a pretty decent fight. And then he gets put in what looked like a leg lock and just screams at the top of his voice. The ref stops it. I think he wasn't too happy with the fact that the ref stopped it, but like, he can't scream like that, man. Everybody who's trained a day in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu knows if you're in a competition and you scream like that, the ref is probably gonna stop it because he thinks you're getting your bone broken. He thinks you're getting your ankle snapped and it's his job to keep you safe. And sometimes when you're in those positions, maybe you can't physically tap or you're just in so much pain that all you can do is scream and it's up to the ref to stop it. If you're in a fight or if you're in a grappling match, you cannot scream. So that was a fair stoppage, but Tuffer wasn't happy with it. And he goes and says something to Walker at the end of the fight and gets in his face and then he slapped him. I mean, what the fuck are you doing, man? I don't think the UFC is gonna to be too happy with him. He's had quite a few losses and acting like that after you get tapped out is just poor sportsmanship. Walker already said in the post-fight press conference he wants to fight his brother, which I think would be cool to see. That'd be cool to see him go through through both the brothers. Uh, I like the Tougher brothers. I like the Tougher brothers. I just don't really get what was going on there. That was strange. All right, so we get to the main card and uh, the first one I want to talk about is Bam Bam because I feel terrible for Tai Tuivasa. He's, uh, I think he's lost five in a row now, if I'm not mistaken. And he's such a crowd favorite. Everybody loves to watch Bam Bam Tuivasa fight. He's just got a good attitude. He fucking swings for the fences. Every time he's in there, he's trying to take people's heads off. Even if he's losing the fight, he is swinging for everything. Obviously, we all like to see his shoey celebrations, which unfortunately hasn't happened in quite a while. And so now he's on this losing streak um, which is probably going to affect his negotiations. He's going to probably drop out of the rankings, but I still think he's a fan favorite and I still think there's plenty of fights for him. Like if you just need someone entertaining to open up the main card, no matter where it is or who it is, you chuck two Ivasa on there and you're guaranteed a good show. Uh, some of the scoring was a bit strange. I mean, one judge had it three rounds to nothing for two Ivasa, which is weird considering the third judge had it three rounds to nothing to Rosenstroke. I don't understand how judges can see the same thing so differently. There needs to be more of a criteria, I think, and maybe we need to take a leaf out of the CJI, which was on this weekend, and have open scoring. I think that could help. And so I don't know what's next for Bam Bam. Hopefully he keeps fighting because he is very entertaining, whether he's winning or losing. I just hope he can get a get back in the win column soon. Dan Hooker, holy shit, man. Is he a BMF? He has to be one of the baddest motherfuckers in the UFC. He absolutely took it to Gamrot. He showed how good he is at defending the takedown. He was an absolute monster. And he was just levels above Gamrot on the feet, which I was really not expecting. I knew he was better on the feet. I didn't expect him to be so good at stuffing the takedowns, but I think honestly, I forgot just how tough Dan Hooker is. You saw him in the, 
think it was the end of the second round when the coaches were trying to give him instructions and he just looks at him and laughs and he's like, I fucking love this shit, boys. And he was having the time of his life in there. Both of his eyes were nearly closed up. I'm sure he's in the hospital right now getting some treatment, but he is an absolute savage. I hope he got performance of the night. He definitely deserves it. But so Dan Hooker slides into, I believe, the top five. I mean, he took out the number five guy. So you would think he goes into the top five, although UFC rankings are kind of strange considering Dana White seems to be the one controlling them. I think he even called out Conor McGregor. He called out uh, Max Holloway for the BMF. I don't know if Max Holloway is putting the BMF title on the line against Ilya Taporia. If he's not, I'd be stoked to see Dan Hooker against Max Holloway. That'd be an awesome fight. Uh, he's won three in a row now, so he's right back in the mix. Steve Erseg, unfortunately, couldn't get it done in his hometown of Perth. He just didn't look to have it tonight, and Kaikara France showed just how tough he is too, man. He swings fucking hard. The guy's five foot four, but what he lacks in height, he definitely doesn't lack in toughness, and he swings for the fences as well, just like Dan Hooker. Both those guys had a real good night tonight. So Kaikara France gets a needed win. He was on a two or three fight losing streak, I think. He needed that win, so he stays in the top four. Possibly gets a shot at the title against Pantoja. I guess we'll wait and see what happens there. But he looked really good. Unfortunate for Steve Erseg. I thought it looked like a little bit of an early stoppage. I mean, he took a really hard punch and then Cara France, it looked like he stepped on his foot and that's what caused him to fall down for the first knockdown. And then the second knockdown, I mean, it looked kind of bad and he was sort of shelling up. I thought he could have done a few more seconds, but honestly, like it didn't look like Steve was going to fight back. And I think the ref probably saw that. Initially, I thought that was early, but after watching it back I think it probably was a fair stoppage so congrats to Kaikara France so the main event didn't disappoint man it was intense during the walkout it was intense during the fighter introductions and the first couple of rounds were also really intense I think Izzy may have got the first round it looked like DDP definitely got the second round and I think Izzy had the third as well I don't know I think maybe DDP was down 2-1 but he could have been up 2-1 I think the first round could have gone either way both guys were looking good on the feet. Izzy connected with some fucking solid shots that DDP did not fall down from. DDP was doing well with the leg kicks, as was Izzy. I think the difference really was the scrambles. You could see Drakus every time he went for a takedown and Izzy would fight it off because Izzy's so good at fighting the takedowns. He's always has been. Drakus just went for the second and the third attempts and just was relentless, wouldn't give up. Eventually kept taking him down and wearing him out a little bit, I think. I also think that Izzy trying to control the center of the octagon tied him out a little bit plus all the wrestling and scrambling and DDP for whatever reason when he's in there he looks like he's tired he looks messy he looks kind of uncoordinated a little bit but it just fucking works and I think the reason it works is because he hits so goddamn hard and he also just tries so hard to get the takedown and wrestle guys and tire him out. I think Drakus really has a good fitness base. He just looks tired a lot of the time, but I've never seen him give up. He's tough as nails and he showed that tonight. And he also showed that he's a good sport. You would think after all that trash talking for the last year that whoever won tonight was gonna be salty. And to be completely honest, don't know what Izzy would have done if he won. I think he might have been a little bit showboaty and a little bit cocky, but I guess we'll never know. Uh, but Drakus was a general He's been a gentleman every time he's fought somebody. I know in the lead up, it can be a bit of a troll, but I think it really shows character to have that much of a feud with someone leading into a fight and then just drop it afterwards. And that actually made me feel good. I'm glad that neither guys held hard feelings towards the other one because at the end of the day, man, like you guys are both getting in there and fighting. Who cares where you're from? Who cares what your fucking skin color is? Who cares about what anyone said about the other person, man? Like you've gone in there, you've both given it everything. Either guy could have won. DDP happened to win tonight and it just wasn't Izzy's night, I think. Izzy's getting on, man. He's been in the octagon so many times in the last six years. He's been going through massive fight camps back to back to back. And that sort of shit catches up with you, especially when you get KO'd by someone like Alex Pereira. But at the end of the day, I think both guys won because they both acted like gentlemen afterwards. I saw a video of Drikus handing over his uh, jacket, which was like a custom-made South Africa jacket to Izzy. And they looked like they shook hands and they, they figured it out. And the best way to figure it out, and this is why I love this sport, is to get in the octagon and fucking fight it out and let the best man win and then shake hands afterwards. And that's what they did. And I think it's good for the sport rather than showboating when you win, doing backflips and 
jumping over the octagon and all this sort of shit. I get the guys are hyped when they win, but it's great to see guys shake hands and be respectful to each other. Especially when you got someone like Izzy, who is a great of the sport, but also is disliked by many people and trolled by a lot of people for the things he says. So now I guess the question is what's next for both guys? DDP seems to be fighting Strickland next. At least that's what Dana White said, which does make sense because their fight was so close. I just feel like Rob Whitaker, no matter what happens, if Rob Whitaker beats Hamza Chimaev, he needs to get a title shot next. I don't care who it's against or when it is. His next fight needs to be a title shot. He's been a company man for so long. I know he's already lost to Drikas. I know he's already lost to Izzy. But apart from that, he has cleaned through the whole division. And I'm saying this because I'm biased and I'm a Rob Whitaker fan. But I want to see Rob Whitaker's next fight, if he wins, to be for a title. If Hamza wins, I think the same thing. I think he should probably be fighting for a title too, just to get some fresh blood in there against Drikas. You can't give Izzy another title shot now. Sorry, but you can't. I respect everything Izzy's done as a champion and how active he was but he doesn't get another title shot for quite a while now. He has to work his way through the rankings just like Rob Whitaker has for the last few years. And I guess if the UFC is really struggling to find a fight for Drikas after a potential Strickland or Whitaker matchup, Alex Pereira posted that he's willing to go back down to 185. We don't usually see that. Once a guy moves up a weight class, he sort of stays there. And we know Pereira has been talking about going to heavyweight, which I don't know if that's ever going to happen or not. But going back down to 185 is actually a pretty interesting move, which I didn't really think about. But I would definitely pay to see Drikas versus uh, Alex Pereira. That would be a great fight. So yeah, great win for Drikas Duplessis. This is the DDP era, man. I mean, he's already beaten the top three contenders in the division and he's pretty much run through everyone in order to get there. He is definitely in control of the middleweight division and I think now he needs to get the respect that he deserves. I know he looks awkward when he fights, but this guy's a fucking fighter, man. He's a great kickboxer. He's a great wrestler and his show tonight is even great at jiu-jitsu. Like he's well-rounded, he's tough as fuck, he hits like a truck. I don't know who's going to beat him. I'm actually interested to see the Rob Whitaker rematch because I think Rob could do better. And Rob, usually when he rematches someone, we saw it against Izzy, he figures him out and he does a lot better. So I guess we'll wait and see what's next. But Dana White said if Drikas wins, they're going to bring the title to South Africa. So I guess that's going to happen, which would be cool to see. Uh, Drikas fighting at home in South Africa. I guess the irony of that is that after all this true African, real African talk, Drikas is going to be the one to bring the UFC to Africa. <laughs> So whether you like him or not, or whether you agree with what he said, he's done a lot for the sport in Africa and he's gonna help grow the sport. It doesn't take anything away from what Izzy or Francis or Kamaru did, but you gotta give your flowers to Drikas Duplessis, man. He's a gentleman, he's a tough as nails fighter, he's entertaining and, oh, by the way, he's also the biggest troll on the mic. I mean, this guy made two people cry. <laughs> in back-to-back -back title fights. It's unreal, man. I'm on the Drakus train for sure. But anyways, that's just a quick wrap up of UFC 305. Let me know what you thought about the fight and the whole card down below in the comments. Did you like it? Did you expect to see Drakus win in that fashion? Let me know what you think's next for Izzy, what's next for DDP and all these guys. And if you made it this far, I appreciate it. Please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.